short field landing, put your mind outside the airplane for a minute. You want to you want to transition this this air vehicle to a ground vehicle using the minimum amount of space on the ground. So once you think about it in the terms of what you're trying to accomplish, then the how to do it becomes really pretty clear. You want to approach at a at a at as slowly as you possibly can in the maximum drag configuration that you can and transfer that weight to the wheels as quickly as you can. The biggest myth with short field landings is that, uh, at least for the test, that it's all about landing as short as you possibly can and so people are constantly dragging it in, uh, you know, doing a little weed whacking on their way to uh, touching down on the very edge of the pavement and making the turn off because, you know, that's, that's what Chuck Yeager would do. But uh, the FAA expects us to uh, turn the short field landing technique into a spot landing technique. Um, and that's, that's really what it's about. So it's, I'm going to aim for the spot and I'm going to hit that spot. And because we're talking usually about obstacles with short field landing, um, typically that approach is going to be steeper even than normal. Um, if you have a Cessna with, um, you know, the 40 degrees of flaps, it makes the process actually really easy because you go that huge amount of flaps, you know, that deploy the barn door, uh, you slow to 60, and, uh, and then it's really a power off steep down nose approach um, to the transition, and then you hit that spot. And then once you touch down, you'll want to raise those flaps and brake aggressively to use the, uh, the minimum distance. There's a tendency to forget to bring the flaps up, or they apply the brakes um, incorrectly, uh, they skid, or sometimes they just forget. You want to touch down as quickly as possible. That plane decelerates quicker when its wheels are on the ground than it does in the flare. As a pilot examiner, what I see is the speeds are all wrong. A lot of um, students and candidates make the error that they consistently approach at the same speeds no matter what type of landing they're doing. And I don't know kind of where this comes from. But we have to remember too that in the books, typically the speeds that are given to us are based on a full up weight. And you have to remember that when it comes to landing an airplane, you want to land at the slowest possible speed commensurate with safety. And if you don't weigh 2,300 pounds that day and you're down at 1,900, approaching at your 70 or 75 is just not going to do it for you. If you think about it, if you, if you remove yourself from the cockpit, you look at the big picture, you get, your, your, you get outside the airplane, then you've got less potential of being confused. If you're only thinking about the mechanics of move this control certain you know move move this set of controls here and there it's easy to miss the big picture and see what you're trying to accomplish